Good morning, everyone. I'm here to tell you about the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Savior of the world. What amazing grace he's had for us, that he sent himself onto that cross to die for our sins, that we might know life and life evermore. This is far better than the paycheck at the end of the week. This is far better than hearing of the news on the BBC. This is the news of eternal life in Christ Jesus, the Lord of all creation. This is far better than anything in this world. This is knowledge of God in Christ Jesus. He's the image of the invisible God. As we look to him, we see God. Therefore, God exalted him, Christ, the, the Christ the Messiah, the Saviour, to the highest place, that at his name every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, for your account, that you will have heard the good news of eternal life, that anyone who puts their faith in Jesus will be saved from death, will be free from sin, addiction. But not only that, you can know communion with God. Yes, knowledge of God is found in the Lord Jesus. He's the Ancient of Days, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. And anyone, yes, anyone, who puts their faith in Him will be saved from death. Jesus has the victory. He holds the victor's crown. We know we all know about glory, the glory of man. You know, we look to celebrities and we see some form of glory. We look to races that run races and we see some form of glory. But Jesus is the glory of heaven. He's the glory of the earth. He's the light of the world. In him is no darkness. He shines, he shines, he shines for all to see. So I'm here this morning to tell you that he saves, that he saves us, he redeems us. He brings us out of the pit, out of the mud and mire, and into life. You know, we've got a nation that's addicted to sex, to drugs, to alcohol, to pornography, to a whole bunch of things. And those things don't bring us life. Those things don't bring us hope. But there is one who brings hope. His name is Jesus. So receive him as your Lord and Savior today. Believe in him. Put your trust in him. And you will know freedom from death. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best news in all the earth. This is far better than watching the BBC this week. This is far better than watching Sky News and being consumed with the idle pomp of the age. You know, we have coronavirus. You'd think that we were all dead, the, the hysteria around it. But there's one above all things. There's the rock of the ages, the Lord Jesus Christ. The wise man builds his house upon the rock and the foolish man builds his house upon the sand. Will you be one that builds his life upon the rock? The Lord God Almighty, Jesus the Christ, the Lord and Savior of all the earth. He's the light of the world. You know, we're all like sheep that have gone astray, all going our own way, all going and doing our own thing. But there is a good shepherd. He loves us. He loves us. So much so that he went to die upon the cross of Calvary, that we might be redeemed in this life. Not only freedom from slavery, but life forevermore. Yes, the shackles of this world can be broken. You know, no doubt some of you will walk through these streets countless times. It's almost like you're shackled to the paycheck. You're shackled to this world in some sense. But you can know freedom from the chains of this world as you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no one like him in all of heaven, in all the earth. He's fairer than the sons of men. He's the most beautiful one, the most marvelous one. In him is the glory of God. He wears the victor's crown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best news. Every idol must come down. Every stronghold must be broken because Jesus wears the victor's crown. We don't have to, buy, we don't have to bow to the state. We don't have to bow to the Pope. We don't have to bow to a priest. We can bow to God through Jesus. This is the news that has transformed this nation, that we don't have to have the state ruling over us, that we don't have to have the Pope ruling over us, but rather we can trust in God. We can bow to God through Jesus. This is right thinking around God. Yes, there are many gods in the earth, but there is one Lord of Lords and King of Kings who came to dwell amongst men, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have a culture today that 
You know, we have cultural righteousness telling us that the LGBT agenda is right, telling us to accept every thought and everything that everyone says. No, there's a right way of thinking, and it's the righteousness of heaven. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many wicked things that you can partake in. You know, many of us, including myself, the worst of sinners, have taken part in many abominable things that don't bring us life. But there is one who gives us life. And the gift of life that I have freely been given, I give to you today, is the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, even the church is turning away from God, it seems. But we all can turn back to God as we look to Jesus. It's the best news. It's the good news. It's the Elangelion in Greek. The good news of eternal life in Jesus. So turn to him. Cry out to him. Call out to him and you will know freedom from the abominable things of this world and life forevermore. Not only life forevermore, but life in this life. You know, we could be consumed with anxiety, with the markets going down, and all sorts of things could consume our spirits. I saw a man this morning, he got his phone out and he was just calculating numbers on his phone. There has to be more to life than the things of this world, to making money, to making, to getting a nice house, you know, to having, you know, sleeping with loads of prostitutes, to watching lots of pornography, to drinking lots of alcohol. There's things beyond those things, above and beyond those things. And it's the knowledge of God, it's the precepts of God. It is God, we can turn to God. We don't have to go to the Pope. Jesus is the great high priest in the order of Melchizedek. He is the one who makes intercessions on our account that we might know salvation. In fact, anyone who believes in him will have streams of living water flowing within them. So believe in him and you'll know the eternal life of heaven welling up within you. In Isaiah 12 we read that the wells of salvation will be poured out onto all flesh and it now is the hour. Yes, we can know the eternal life of God. It's not by the prophet Muhammad. It's not by Confucius. It's not by men. It's by God and through God and in God. It's in God and it's through Jesus, who is God. He's the image of the invisible God. And anyone who puts their faith in him will be brought out of death and into life. So join with me in worshipping God rightly, not turning to a priest or an imam or a rabbi, but turning to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the, this is the knowledge that's transformed this nation, that we don't have to bow to the state, that we don't have to bow to the Pope, that we can bow to God through Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we have many philosophies prowling around the, the UK at the moment. But there's one truth. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. None gets to the Father except through him. He's the light of the world. In him is no darkness. He's overcome death itself. And anyone who puts their faith in him will be brought from death to life. So join with me in turning back to God. We've got our freedom as a nation and we can turn back to God and know the wealth and health and, pros and, and, and the life of God. We can know the grace of God, the peace of God. You know, God has had his hand of mercy on this nation for many generations, but we're on the cusp. Are we going to turn back to God and trust in him completely? Or are we going to trust in ourselves? Because I don't know about you, but I've trusted in myself before and I'm always, I always end up you know, in a pit. I don't know what to do. With, I, you know, I haven't got a clue. But God knows all things. It's the same for all of us. You know, if we all do things in our own strength, we're bound to fail. We're bound to be caught up in anxiety and depression. But if we turn to God and trust in Him, we can know life. So join with me, ladies and gentlemen, in turning back to God, our Maker, the King of Heaven and Earth, the Ancient of Days, the Omnipotent One, the All-Powerful One, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, we've got many things prowling around. Maybe you conform to one way of thinking or another. But ladies and gentlemen, there's one truth. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. None gets to the Father except through Him. Hallelujah. He's the bread of life. Bread of heaven, feed me now forevermore. Feed me 
now forevermore. You know, we might go to one of the nice restaurants for our fill this lunchtime, but there's a fill from heaven. It's the bread of heaven. It's the bread of life. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we get our fill from heaven, as we get our fill from the Lord Jesus, we're brought out of the, you know, trusting in the things of this world and into trusting God. He is able to sustain us, to, 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 to um, fulfill us up with the knowledge of Him. He's the bread of heaven. He's the light of the world. You know, there's many, you know, there's prophets and there's many men who say things. We have the comedians who sit, tell us how to think and tell us how to do things and how to, tell us how to interact with people. But there's one who is the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the light of the world. He's the light. In him is no darkness. Can't you see? He shines brighter than the sun. You know, for Zion's sake I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her righteousness shines like the sun. And her righteousness, God's righteousness, is manifest in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the light of the world. In him is no darkness. In him is no darkness. Hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, and the life. None gets to the Father except through him. He's the way to heaven. He's the truth above truth. Yes, there is truth in this world. His name is Jesus. God has ordained all things. We're not here per chance. We are here because God has ordained our lives. He's given us life. The Ruach of God, the breath of God has breathed in the earth. The Spirit of God hovered above the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God breathed life into the earth. And we are all here because of God. He's ordained our lives. And he's the truth and the life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He has ordained our lives, ladies and gentlemen. We're not here per chance. We've been created by God. Each, our bodies are in, in, incredible. Like the way that they work, our bodies are the most incredible thing in all the earth. And yet we still believe the lies that Darwin and his dog started propagating about 150 years ago. That we're here per chance. The best he's got is two finches that, that, that can't mate together. There's no living evidence of different kinds of animals becoming different kinds of animals. All he's got is two fishes finches and that's what we go with it's an absolute lie from the pit of hell we are here because God has ordained our lives and God wants us to commune with him to have knowledge of him and we can have knowledge of God our maker our creator as we turn to the Lord Jesus he's rich in mercy he's compassionate and kind despite the fact we're in rebellion, in enmity to God. He has made a way for us to commune with Him. Despite the fact we think we know better in our narcissistic age, He still has mercy upon us and He longs for us to come into communion with Him. There's nothing better than communion with God, not just freedom from sin and addiction, but communion with God, our Maker. This is the best news, that we can know God in this life, that there's hope beyond the grave. Don't believe the lies of the age that we're here per chance. We're not here by chance. Our lives have been ordained, and we can know the great ordainer, the great sustainer of life, God, as we turn to Jesus. This is the rock of this nation, the cornerstone, the capstone that we have depended on for many generations. And I'm calling this generation to turn back to God through Jesus. Have right thinking of Him. I, do, I didn't hear you, sir. I w I, I'm happy to talk to you if you want to have a, a conversation. God has ordained our lives. He has given us life. And we can know God, our Maker, as we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Join with me in worshipping God. He's the bread of heaven. Be me now for.